Yes. Great. So, you know, I feel a little bit uh, funny coming at the end and talking about community in action because I feel like uh, the past two days we've seen our community in action. Um, we've seen what is happening on the ground from implementers. Um, we've seen the technical direction that we're going and we've seen like collaboration happening um, every, everywhere in between. So what I wanted to do in, in just like the next like 10, 15 minutes is talk about some of the things I've been thinking about around community engagement and how we can unlock even more um, collaboration in our community. And one of the things that I try to do as I'm thinking about um, doing this for our community is, you know, what are other global goods doing? Um, how do they get community members involved? What are other open source projects doing? Um, what can we, you know, how, how do we learn from them? Um, what can we share with them to help them, you know, achieve their, their goals too? So I was, I was really, um, my interest was really piqued a, a few months ago when I came across this study from the to-do group around um, open source project offices. And there are two findings that I, that I wanna highlight for you. And then I wanna talk about, you know, what this might mean for our community. How does, how does this relate to us? And then, and then I still have questions that I wanna share with you and get your in, insight into them. So the first finding from this study, which looked at, by the way, like over a thousand different participants and about 900 different um, open source um, companies or companies contributing to open source. The first finding was really that more, com more most companies are still in what the to-do group called their open source journey. Um, this means they're consuming open source, but they're not yet active in upstream communities. So this seemed like one of the, similar to what some of the questions we we're asking, like how do we get more people contributing to um, and collaborating in our community? So I thought that this was a really interesting finding. So about 81% is still kind of in this consuming spot and, but 30% are starting to really get into that, that influencing role. The other finding that I thought was really interesting was that frequent contributors, those companies that, um, are frequently contributing to the open source projects that they depend on, that their business depends on. They seem to be getting a higher return on investment um, from their participation in open source um, foundations or communities. So, you know, you can, this started to get me thinking about, well, how many people, you know, how many groups in our community frequently contribute code upstream? Um, how many sometimes contribute code upstream? And you know who rarely or never um, contributes code upstream. So I started to, you know, I started thinking about this. Are we seeing the same thing with OpenMRS? Um, what what can we say? And so I started reflecting on this meeting's showcases and our presentations as a way of um, taking this pulse and seeing if we're seeing some of these same trends. And then I also started thinking about, well, what does the data that we collect around um, OpenMRS implementation have to say? Um, what can we learn from both our meeting, our showcase data and our implementation data? So just to, just to kind of hone in on what is that open source journey and what might it look like for OpenMRS? We're essentially talking about going from people who are not involved at all with OpenMRS, not helping us, you know, it's not even, maybe it's like maybe on their radar and they're following it to people who are, you know, consuming open source code in their products and services to occasionally contributing or collaborating on what we call shared assets, um, which I'll go into in a minute. Um, and then who's more frequently initiating or collaborating on shared community assets, and then who might be influencing OpenMRS via leadership or maintainer roles. So that's a little bit how I thought uh, we might think about this open source uh, journey for OpenMRS and really kind of, it comes down to, are you, are you not involved because you're, you wanna go fast and go alone? And are you, are you ready to go far and go together? So st I started with our implementation data and yesterday I started with this graph um, and just showing how much, um, how far, OpenMRS implementations have gone. Um, we're, we're going 
farther in the, in the world, we're seeing more and more um, implementations help us achieve our mission of improving patient care. We have, you know, and this is all self-reported data. So, so we know that this is actually uh, very underreported and it's probably much higher than what we have here. So we can see that, that we have that big group of OpenMRS implementations helping us meet our, our mission. Um, and then I thought, okay, well, what are we doing to help people get you know, further on their open source journey? So we've taken the step of adopting new front-end technology that will unlock collaboration. We've updated our community model, model to make it easier for small groups to rapidly collaborate on shared solutions to their top priorities. We've seen a lot of these efforts um, from the different squads in, in the last uh, two days. And then we're also providing squads, teams, and even you know, implementers who want to, to go further up on their open source journey with more support. So you know, this year we have myself, Christine, Daniel, Rafal has now joined us this year, and Grace. We're all providing support to, to the squads and the teams who really want to collaborate. And, and you see a lot of the results of the work um, happening here. So what, you know, then we're gonna go to what, what actually is happening? Are we actually seeing more contributions, more collaboration happening? And so once again, you know, I shared this, this data yesterday. You know, when we first st started changing up our community model and working in squads, we had six organizations working on contributing to three squads or teams. And we just had three roles supporting that effort. Um, at the at the end at OMRS 21, I said we're going to revisit this and see how far we've come in the last two years. And now we know that we have 15 different organizations contributing to seven squads or teams. And 2021, we had seven OpenMRS Inc. supported roles. So not only the people that I just mentioned, but all of our OpenMRS fellows. And now we have even more. So so. I think we are seeing that there's this shift and people are moving through and through the open source, you know, the open MRS open source journey, um, going from, you know, implement, you know, a large number of organizations implementing open MRS to more and more really collaborating and contributing upstream um, on shared assets. So just very quickly though, I said shared assets a couple of times. Just a quick reminder of what we're actually talking about. A shared asset is something that um, solves a shared problem across multiple implementations. Um, it's something that at least two organizations or more can work on together. And it's, it's something that many um, in the OpenMRS community, many implementations can anticipate using. Whereas implementation specific um, assets is something that perhaps a single organization works on um, because they have to meet country implementation needs and requirements. It might be simply extending a shared asset and, and tailoring it to the country implementations and needs, but it will feel substantially different to the end user than perhaps the, the shared asset. So that's, so just a reminder, that's what we're talking about when we're talking about implementation specific assets and shared assets. So I asked myself, if we look at this, this is great to know that we're seeing more organizations contribute and collaborate um, to community squads and getting support from, from the community. But what does the bigger picture look like? Like, can we put the implementations and the, and the, share, the, the collaboration on shared assets together? What does it actually look like? So I kind of tried to very roughly put this together and see what it looks like. Um, so you see all of, the, all of the groups who have shared with us their implementation data. So these are all the groups who have said, um, who contribute data to that first graph I said, I shared. Um, and then you have, and then, you know, we look at GitHub and we see how many are sharing their code on GitHub openly. And then how many, how many different groups are not just sharing their code um, openly on GitHub, but also you know, are doing implementation specific work. And then you see, you know, as we get up further, further up 
um, the line, those organizations who, who are making those co code contributions to, to the open MRS squads. And I think that this group, this number is growing, but it'd be fantastic um, to, see, to see the trajectory continue to, to move forward, which is why I still have questions about the to-do group survey and how we can how we can actually um, think about new ways to unlock more and more collaboration. So um, I have two questions that I would love to get everybody's input on um, to try to get a better sense of you know who exactly is contributing um, to OpenMRS in what ways and and what is the what do we get out of it? So one of it is um, and I'll share these two questions via Mentimeter. Um, and I'd love to hear from everybody is how valuable is the support you receive from our from our community? And then the second question I have, you know, especially for those of you who work for an organization is where do you think your organization is on its open MRS journey? So let I'm just going to switch over to um, the Mentimeter questions and let's first of all uh, Let's start with that first question. I want to make it big enough on the screen for everybody to see. How valuable is the support you receive from the OpenMRS community? And I'm just putting a link to the Mentimeter code in the chat. Um, this is good for the next question too. Um, so you can either use the Mentimeter code or you can go to menti.com and put in the code 39174106. Now, how valuable is that support you receive from the community? Good to see that a couple of people are, are sharing your impressions. This is completely anonymous. I have no idea who's responding. So this is this is your chance to tell us, you know, how valuable is it? Um, and and then I, you know, we can start thinking about ways to, you know, make it even more valuable. How valuable is the support you get from the community? And it, it might, you know, it's it's generally the community and it may be specifically from um, the, the people that I shared earlier um, on the screen, Grace, Rafal, Daniel, Christine, myself, fellows. So we're seeing more people share their responses. Great. Great. It's okay if you don't know, that's helpful too. We just really kind of want to get an idea. I'll just kind of give it one more minute for people to reflect on your experience collaborating or, or working with the community. Okay, let's move on to the second question, um, which I'm really interested in hearing. You know, how often does your organization do the following activities? So if you strongly agree, just read each one and strongly agree or disagree whether or not your organization uses or customizes OpenMRS code, creates your own repos or distributions, contribute code upstream to an OpenMRS repo, Maybe you train developers to contribute code to OpenMRS repos. Maybe you're actively, your organization is actively recruiting and hiring developers who know how to contribute code um, collaboratively in the community. Maybe you attend and present at OpenMRS events and conferences. 
and maybe you're making non-technical contributions to the OpenMRS community. And yes, strongly agree means often. So how often does your organization do the following things? It's a, it's a, you know, this is just an informal poll, just wanting to get a quick snapshot of, you know, what you think your organization does, um, where it's, where it is, food for thought, essentially. Seeing more and more changes to the, the answers. This is really interesting. Um, seeing a variety. We started off with everybody saying that they do everything often, and now, now we're seeing that some, some are, are taking the lead over others, seeing a lot of people feeling like their organization uses or customizes OpenMRS code, fewer trained developers to contribute code. Many attend or present at OpenMRS events or conferences. This is great. Fantastic. Well, I'm going to leave this up and active in the background in case you want to, you know, contribute more more feedback this way. Um, but I I'm really interested in looking more in depth at these different responses and even asking more about um, different organizations' experience on their open source uh, open MRS journey and how and how they envision it. So um, if you're interested in talking about this with me feel free to reach out and don't be surprised if I reach out to you um, to have a, a brief conversation about you, your, your journey, your organization's journey, and how we can um, make it easier for you to achieve your, your goals when it comes to contributing to OpenMRS and helping us achieve our mission. Thank you. And back over to you, Christine.